So carrying on from my uh, talk at Demuxed, uh, I'm going to give a, a slightly, slightly better talk, hopefully this time, uh, with slightly less puns, because apparently people didn't like the puns. Who knew? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I did get booed at Demuxed. It was me that booed, so. Wow. Yeah. Must have been a bad joke. Um, so if anyone can figure out why I've uh, put a patent up on the front of my smooth streamings talk, um, then you get bonus points tonight. Um, have a think about that. One. Look what's happening to that guy. Was he leaning? Well, you forget something. There you go. <laughs> for, for a smooth criminal. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay, well done. There you go. Extra beer. <laughs> Not going to tell puns when I'm going to make really obscure references. So, um, <laughs> Well, this is is this is a kind of a war story of building a smooth streaming server when no one in the team actually knew anything about Microsoft smooth streaming. Um, so, what's smooth streaming? So, it's a chunked HTTP ABR delivery technology. It's Microsoft's old baby. Uh, it's based on ISO BMFF, so exact same standard MPEG Dash uses for its media packaging, and it's uh, built into IIS. If you happen to use IIS web servers, um, which we all do, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's dead as well. Uh, Microsoft won't talk to you about it. Um, I phoned Microsoft. Like, I even got some fairly senior people at Microsoft and said, hey, uh, I need some like, details on what the best practice is for implementing a smooth streaming server. And they told me to use Dash uh, everywhere where it isn't even possible <laughs> to use Dash. So, so it's dead. So why, why do we need to build a smooth streaming server? Uh, customers need it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble here, aren't I? <laughs> I, can, I can give you one very good reason why you need smooth streaming. Is it these? <laughs> nope. Multiple language support. Multiple language support, it's in Dash. Uh, HLSV4 as well. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't available. Wait, that's true, well, it wasn't available. But anyway, so the, the real reason people want Dash now is these, these smart TVs. Now, these aren't actually this year's smart TVs, and that's fairly deliberate. These are 2014, 2013. Did I? You said Probably. people want Dash. Well, I, no, people don't want Dash TVs. No, no. People want Smooth. People want Smooth. Uh, people want DRM, more accurately. People want DRM on these TVs. These TVs do one delivery technology if you want DRM and it's smooth with play ready unless you've got a lot of money to go build a very big native app and get it into their app store uh, but if you want just kind of a, a cheap app and you want an easy integration pattern you want to be using a smooth with play ready so okay we need to get it onto these TVs so what resources were we working from so Microsoft have some specs they're mediocre at best. Um, the good thing is, there's quite a lot of manifests out there you can go read. There's quite a lot of media out there you can go download and fiddle with. Um, so it's not too hard to kind of get something that like works and reverse engineer what's going on. Um, there's free reference players that we decide to use. These are the web players. These are all based in Silverlight. Um, there's one called uh, Direct Apps. Uh, this is owned by Microsoft. Microsoft also claimed for the record they didn't own this. They definitely own this, for the record. <laughs> Even the domain is owned by them, I checked. Um, Akamai have a reference player, and uh, Bento has a reference player. The Akamai and the Microsoft one are pretty much the same thing, uh, whereas the Bento one is a little bit different. It, it varies a bit in its implementation. So let's, uh, let's make an architecture for our theoretical smooth streaming server. Uh, so we've got a player. This is the Akamai player for reference, playing Big Book Bunny. Um, so I like microservices, so we built a couple of different services. So we built a service to serve some manifests. So when it gets a manifest, it goes to a URL, gets a manifest, and it maybe looks at some metadata to see how it's going to string together the segments. And then when it's got the manifest, it's going to go to a different server to go and get through a CDN, to go and get to an origin service, to go get the actual media segments, so fragmented MP4 on a file server. So pretty simple architecture, right? So. Let's talk about the media. Uh, Smooth is, like I said, a lot like Dash Media. It's almost identical to Dash Media. So it's ISO box media format, fragmented MP4. So we had a load of Dash Media, so let's use the Dash Media, right? There's no reason to go re-encoding and repackaging. So Smooth serves a manifest. Manifest is, of course, XML. Uh, and it looks quite a lot like a Dash manifest. Um, the majority of Smooth is served as separate audio and video tracks. Uh, very rarely do you see any MUX Smooth. Um, and it uses kind of something that looks a lot like segment timeline concept in Dash, where it declares kind of segments of a particular duration. It doesn't give you a URL for each segment, but gives you kind of the duration that you then substitute into the URL in your player. 
but there's a big thing missing here as you compare it to Dash. There's no initialization segment in Dash. So Dash serves the uh, F-type and move atoms completely separately and the uh, but Smooth does it completely differently. There's no separate URL for your initialization fragments. So, and this is, oh, oh well, that's, that's horrific, isn't it? <laughs> Can I just unscrew the light bulbs? <laughs> it's, it's actually, an, even better, it's, it's an embedded image, so it's not even like a, um, let's zoom, no, I tried to zoom this once, it went awfully. It's, it's not buffering. <laughs> No, no, we really can't do that. Uh, okay, right. Okay, so I'm going to pretend you can see this. Uh, you can't. Hopefully, you can see here. There's something called a URL, which uh, says quality levels, and then the bit rates embedded in here, and then some custom attributes, and then the fragments with the uh, start time of each fragment. So then you can hopefully just about see down here. These are a list of the fragments in the file. So obviously, at every interval of this is 1,900. And 18 milliseconds. There's a lot of numbers on the end. We'll get onto that in a second. But every that cycle, you're going to go and fetch a new segment. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a lot better, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, great. So, we can now see these uh, quality level URLs and we can see these segments. So, these segments get substituted into the start time of the URL and the bit rate from your media, which is floating around here or somewhere, gets substituted into your URL as well. So, like I said, there's this uh, init information here. So, this is what Smooth does instead of serving an F-type and a move atom. But what on earth is it? Uh, so <laughs> we had no idea what this codec private data is, went and looked in the specs. So basically, it's the SPS and PPS values from your MP4, uh, zero padded to the left and concatenated together. Uh, so it's really easy to get hold of these values from Bento. So Bento has an MP4 info tool. Uh, if you and just get your SPS and PPS. Okay, cool. So we've got the information we need to generate an init segment. Cool. Fantastic. So the second problem, relatively media paths. So that example we showed, you can see that we've got this URL here. So like I showed in our architecture, we had a separate host name for our manifest and a separate host name for our media. So the first time we started implementing, this started with HTTP colon slash slash some media origin slash some CDN, whatever. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, as it turns out, that worked in one out of the three reference players. Um, that's, that's not good because that means other things are definitely not going not gonna to do a good job of playing that. Um, so you have to serve a single host name for absolutely everything. This is a really painful knock-on effect that means your manifests have to go through the same CDN tiering as your media, which stops you doing some really cool and clever things with manifest rewriting, so that kind of sucks. So let's do a bit of an architectural fix, let's rewrite our architecture a bit. So now I've got a CDN, so happily I picked a CDN that has uh, smart routing in it, so I can route to different origins based on different paths, so hey, that's great, convenient. Um, so yeah, I can just route off to a different origin depending on whether you want the manifest or whether you want the actual media. So it's pretty easy fix, I can fix that one. So okay, we, we'd kind of seen these problems coming from a long way away, we'd played around with reference players and see what worked and what didn't. So we implemented it, as I said, and it still only worked in one of the three players. Uh, the other two players exhibited absolutely bizarre symptoms of AV sync and playback rate, so uh, Julian's waving. The same one of the three players still? It was, okay, so the player that worked for all this is the Bento player. Uh, the Bento player is, is well built um, in comparison to the Akamai and Microsoft players. Um, but yeah, so the other two players showed things like, um, my favorite one was when it played the entire video track and then decided to play the audio track afterwards. <laughs> I, I, God only knows. Uh, there was another one where it played the video at twice the frame rate, then stopped while the audio played at the normal rate, <laughs> then played the next segment at twice the frame rate. It was, it was an absolutely ridiculous nightmare. <laughs> um, I wish I had videos of this. <laughs> I did go looking last night at about 2 a.m. trying to find the old manifests that had messed up values in them, but sadly I didn't. So a, a fairly long and painful story short. Uh, the problem is time scale. So, a really, really super quick primer on time scale. So time scale defines a scale at which you define durations within your sample table and MP4 file. So a time scale of a thousand means roughly do a thousand ticks per second in your player, and then you can present your frames on that time scale. So if you've got a thousand ticks and you want to do a 25 frames a second, okay, that's 40 milliseconds a frame. So that's your kind of value you're going to put in your sample table for each frame. You're going to say display this frame for 40 milliseconds. The problem is that thousand is is quite 
a simple case, right? 1,000 is quite a simple case. So here's a, here's a way you can have a look at a sample table in an MP4 file. Uh, this is um, 2997 frames a second um, with a time scale of 10 million, which will be a magic number we come to in a second. Um, and you can get MP4 info from Bento again to show you all this information. So you can see that we're displaying each frame for about 33.3666 milliseconds and we're displaying each frame for the same amount of time. So that's kind of telling you how long to display this for. Um, so we were doing dash media, so the dash media had kind of been encoded to whatever time scale best fit the particular frame rate that we were using. But that's not what uh, Smooth was expecting. So we were declaring this correctly in the manifest. You can kind of see it here. We were declaring a, a time scale of 1,000 up here, ignoring this time scale up here. This is a time scale of this particular stream. We were setting it correctly up here. If you look at the um, intervals on our segments in the timeline, they're also expressed in terms of that same time scale, so this should work. Um, the spec allows for this. It allows you to declare your time scale in this way, but as it turns out, it just, it just doesn't work. Um, the implementation is completely lazy. Um, the default value in the spec is 10 million. So everyone has implemented it as, we'll just do the default. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's configurable as long as it's 10 million? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it is exactly, exactly what it means. So, and, and this kind of gives away how we kind of got to this solution. Um, we discovered every single other packager out there was using a time scale of 10 million, which is kind of a dead giveaway that we should probably use 10 million. Um, so, a fix, a uh, time scale everything to 10 million. Um, it's kind of a, a bit of a taking a kind of axe to something that we should be sewing, but um, no, uh, so we just repackaged everything to a time scale of 10 million. Um, you can still do time scale of 10 million in Dash, and it probably plays fine in most places. Um, it does have undesirable consequences sometimes. Zach knows what I'm talking about. Um, if you want to talk about that later at a bar, I will <laughs> tell you to talk to Zach, actually. Um, but yeah, so that, that's fine. So we tested it. Uh, it works on all three of these players. So this is the, uh, Mal recognizes the Oceans demo again. Uh, so this is Yakimai player, this is the, uh, no, sorry, this is Yakimai player, this is the uh, Yakimai, direct taps, and Bok in the, on the right, Bento's on the right. So, but of course, reference players are only half the story of, of this headache. Uh, like I said, um, the whole point of doing this is to work on all these smart TVs uh, that came out two or three years ago. So, <laughs> yes. we decided to test on them. And yeah, sorry, I used the word smart around <laughs> the word smart here. Um, and it's not just smart TVs, it's actually also games consoles, a load of games consoles where Smooth is a fairly expected delivery technique. I'm not going to name any names. Actually, I am in a minute. But um, <laughs> so, uh, so, a problem four is specs. Haha. -ha. So, um, being spec compliant in Smooth is completely meaningless. You can comply to whatever Smooth spec you want and nothing really works. The TVs implement a sub, uh, subset of these standards. Uh, this is what Dash is like as well. Um, we are never going to learn. Um, so at least we're doing some work kind of with Dash interoperability specs now to kind of try and make sure that Dash looks the same everywhere. HVV TV is obviously here, but you know, I, I guarantee the same problem exists in Dash right now on the 2015 and 2016 TVs. Um, so when we did these tests, uh, we didn't actually have access to any TVs, which is terrifying. Uh, what we had is video recordings and packet captures. So that's a fairly hard thing to do. If anyone ever asks you to do this, like gives you a packet capture and says, work out what the player is doing wrong, just, just say no. <laughs> it's absolutely awful. I, <laughs> worst week in my life. Um, and here's two of the worst examples. So we talked about custom attributes. Uh, at the start. So here's, uh, like we said, we have this template for our URLs where the bitrate gets embedded into it and then this custom attribute string. And then on each piece of media we define some custom attributes and we said the attribute is asset ID and it's got a, a, a UID that identifies it. It's pretty, pretty basic stuff. So given that, what should happen? Well, the player should request quality levels 451 Okay, so that's the bitrate. And then embeds the asset ID in that serialized form. Pretty simple, right? This is how it should work. So I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Uh, <laughs> so TV manufacturer number one, Tony. Um, <laughs> it's not liable if you don't write it down, right? Is, is that the way it is? 
Um, so their smart TVs actually worked fine. There wasn't a problem with their smart TVs. Uh, the games console, it kind of gives away who it is, doesn't it? The Tony games consoles. Um, <laughs> it's really on. No. <laughs> so um, the games consoles, uh, this is a really interesting error report I got given. It was uh, the error report said uh, it plays absolutely fine for four seconds and then stops. This is a 20 minute video. I classify four seconds as not a successful playback, but apparently someone else doesn't. Um, so what happens is it plays the first few fragments and it seemed to fail as soon as it tried to do a rendition switch. So uh, what's wrong here? So I'm going to give you, hopefully, a second look at this. So here's three segment requests. These are stolen out of the packet capture I got sent. So the first one is a video segment. The second one's an audio segment. You can kind of ignore that. Uh, third one's another video segment, and I'll give you a hint what's happened. There's been a rendition switch between this line and this line. I'll give you five seconds. What's wrong? And people who work at Brightcove aren't allowed to answer. <laughs> the asset ID changed. The asset ID didn't change. Doesn't change. That's what's really interesting, right? So if we ignore the audio track, which I put in here, it's kind of trick, trick people. You would expect if we're changing kind of quality levels, changing bitrate, the asset ID should probably change. No. Nope, it is literally just that the asset ID didn't change. So the custom attribute should be recalculated every time the rendition switches. In this player, they're not. They're only recalculated on when the manifest is first fetched. So that was pretty, pretty bad, actually, that one. <laughs> um, Manufacturer <laughs> 2. Uh, um, don't know who these guys are. Tharp. Um, so, <laughs> wait till we get to Quanasonic. Um, only kidding. <laughs> So, Manufacturer 2, uh, absolutely nothing played. Uh, we went and looked at the packet traces. Audio segments fetch fine, video segments all 404'd. It actually 403 but that's a different story. So, what's wrong on this one? You should be, should be able to see this one. This is an audio segment at the top. This is a video segment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, this, this player was only interpreting custom attributes if it was an audio track, not if it was video track. So um, that one was kind of a non-starter, funnily enough. So uh, the, the obvious fix for this is custom attributes are way inconsistently implemented. You should basically never rely on them. Just throw them away, match on something else. Um, there is a, a way of doing language embedded in it as well, so you can kind of you can kind of make all this work. And, and step three here is cry yourself to sleep at night, <laughs> um, which I did more than once. So lessons learned, uh, don't blindly follow the spec and go and implement it because it's probably not going to work if you do that, but that shouldn't really be news to any software engineer. If you just blindly implement the spec, it's probably not going to work. Uh, manufacturers are lazy. Again, probably shouldn't be news. Uh, the one that does amuse me is the fact that Microsoft didn't even follow the Microsoft Smooth Streaming spec uh, because their player doesn't do the timescale stuff. So. Well, they don't know it. <laughs> yeah, they don't own it. They own the domain, but <laughs> it's a fair point, actually. <laughs> Maybe that's why they say they don't own it. And <laughs> number three, <laughs> Re yeah, reverse engineering players via Wireshark is dumb, but completely possible, as it turns out. Who knew? Uh, I never imagined I have to do it. Uh, if you can get the devices and the apps, just just do it. Um, I was gonna ask why you didn't ask them to ship you the TV. I I. Uh, I <laughs> You should see his living room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much it. I, I'm not going to I'm going to ramble on too much longer. Um, questions, comments, other war stories you guys have had with smooth streaming? Julian? So, so I'm a video engineer and I'm working on smooth streaming and I come from the SF Tech Meetup. And I'm looking for help with smooth streaming. Which person should I ask? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, James Ye isn't here tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he deliberately did not attend. <laughs> <laughs>